Leaders from Southeast Asian nations vow to fight terrorism. Terrorism and violent extremism endanger the peace, the stability, and security of our region because these threats know no boundaries. And the United Nations lends a helping hand. The United Nations is prioritizing support for national and regional efforts to counter terrorism and to prevent violent extremism. Regional security was the focus at the 31st ASEAN summit, but critics say the regional bloc was quiet on human rights issues. We always balancing uh, the relevance of ASEAN in keeping all our people uh, peaceful versus the non-interference uh, principle in domestic affairs. And will there be a change of heart for President Rodrigo Duterte towards international organizations like the UN? Philippine Ambassador to the United Nations, Teddy Boy Luxin, joins us in the program. And later, this is not a movie scene, a breathtaking rescue operation of six sperm whales in Indonesia. That's for today's In Focus. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pinky Webb. The 31st Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit is over, but questions remain on what are the actual gains of the summit. President Erte says the ASEAN seeks to address the rise of extremism or terrorism in the region, and the United Nations pledges its support for counter-terrorism efforts. But how far can the UN go in helping the Philippines amid the conflict of perspectives between the organization and the president on the issue of human rights? Let's go straight to the source of the story. Philippine Ambassador to the United Nations, Teddy Boy Luxin Jr. Teddy Thank Boy. you, Pinky. And uh, I'm going to call you Pinky, so call me Teddy Boy. Um, but, I don't really want to be called Amba. I, I, when I was a congressman, I used to be called Kong, oh. and I had to tell them, you know, that's the, the surname of a monkey. <laughs> so just let it go. Um, besides, when I work for Cory Aquino, I noticed that for her, a person is what they do. The titles are a matter of indifference to They're her. They're immaterial. Yeah, she never cared. So yeah. I, I'm okay. forced to call you Teddy, Teddy Boy. Okay. Teddy Boy. That's not, don't be forced because I call you Pinky. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's assess. I okay. wanted to get your assessment on the recently concluded ASEAN summit. Okay. First, um, the impression of the spectacle. I. I've never uh, attended uh, an ASEAN summit except one of the first ones when Cory Aquino be well, became president. And, and the summit consisted of, I guess we were 10 people there or maybe less. Uh, I don't know if Myanmar had come in yet. But they were all around the table. Cory was there. We were in Sofitel and um, surrounded by basically gunboats close to the embassy. That was important because uh, my good friend, he really is my good friend, Greg Onassan, was launching coup d'etats. And Cory said, I'm really embarrassed that I have to host it like this. And uh, that's when I saw just how genuine is the affection of ASEAN and more particularly of, um, of Indonesia towards us. Because uh, General Suharto looked at her and said, don't be embarrassed. Why do you think I bring General Mordani wherever I go? <laughs> if I leave him behind, he'll take my place. <laughs> and Lee Kuan Yew chimed in, etc. Yeah, so what a stark difference but now, from then God, to now, yeah. huh? Um, I was listening to the to the UN guys talking to me because basically I have to follow Duterte and I can't uh, uh, go to any other uh, any other event. I mean I have to to follow Guterres, no. And um, they said foreign press said nobody will match this. This is really big. And then, and I, I really credit um, Ambassador Painor. The guy is, uh, I like to call him, he gets embarrassed because he's very shy. Uh, our Eisenhower preparing for D-Day. I know, I saw that tweet of yeah, yours. 400 people, not his, assigned to him from different departments, coordinating 50,000 police and other uh, security agencies. He's, he's an expert already. Yes, yeah. Ambassador yeah. Painor. Well, of course, I want to say, I forgot to say, welcome back to the Philippines. Oh, yeah, well. That, You've been missed. <laughs> so you're back for a bit because... Um, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres yeah. was here for the ASEAN summit. Okay, so there was a UN ASEAN uh, summit which the president was not able yes, to preside right. over. He was still with uh, the Russians. The, yeah, um, mm -hmm. so um, what happens is when, when we found out that he didn't, wasn't able to preside, was there 
Was there some sort of disappointment on the side of the United Nations that the president was not able to be there? Um, I don't think so, because then, you know, you, uh, the, the foreign, our foreign secretary gives the welcome, and then he gets to, he's there not particularly for us, but for ASEAN, and uh, he was able to raise what is the, you know, the strong concern now, a very sensitive one, the Rohingya issue directly to Su Chi, who was there. Yeah. And he did it very elegantly. Yeah, I, I was able to watch that yeah. as well when he mentioned the, the problem. You see, uh, that's where we're going to go because, of course, the issue of human rights is still uh -huh. a topic here. Yes. Did the UN Secretary General discuss it or not? But yes, uh, towards the end of his well speech, he did talk about the that's Rohingya right. uh, crisis. Let's, uh, let's just listen listen to a portion of the opening with you. I'd like to break it down into two. Um, he talked about technical support for um, ready to provide technical support to the ASEAN and even other countries. What kind of technical support are we talking about? Well, here? one is they they, um, they created the, the counter-terrorism unit within the UN under Russian, Voronkov. I don't know what his background is. Let's hope it's military because they're, they're pretty good in dealing with terrorism, as you know. But um, the UN has always been supportive. When I was new, when I had just arrived in the in the UN mission, um, the, beside my room is, is, a, is a conference room, and there were all these uh, two men, two white men, the one white woman, uh, and they said, what are you doing here? He says, we're getting visas to go to the Philippines. This was before Marawi, about three weeks before. Mm -hmm. and he says, what, what about? They said, well, uh, believe it or not, this was really many months ago, uh, ISIS is being defeated in the Middle East and they're now looking for countries with soft borders. Yours is one of the softest. Yeah. And uh, he says, we're going there to warn them. That's why I told them, well, I'll tell you, you'll be talking to bureaucrats, and more likely your, your insights will be written down very meticulously and then filed away and nobody will see it. Give me a copy, and I don't care what the bureaucracy uh, mm -hmm. thinks is proper, I will release it to Ping Lakson mm -hmm. so he can make a fuss. But I guess they follow protocol very strictly. They did not give me the report. They didn't, huh? They did not, and the result was Marawi broke out. I was also in the UN, uh, we were talking, they were, it was a conference to praise of all things, and it's about time, the handling of Yolanda. I said, thank you very much, you're too late because my friend lost the election <laughs> with all the brickbats he got. And the guy was giving the reports of how well Yolanda was, um, was handled. At that time, Marawi was going on, came to me and said, I was doing the Yolanda assessment. I went to Marawi because I'm a UN guy, I go anywhere. And they were building fortifications for what's happening now. Mm -hmm. So why didn't you tell anyone? I said, why should I? That's your country. You should be the one to know it. And besides, it was the army who took me there. Mm -hmm. And we saw it. So I said, so why didn't they complain? But then I figured, I'm just speculating that uh, the BBL was going on and any army officer who complains about Muslim terrorism is going to get demoted to lieutenant. Mm -hmm. So, so but, but if we we're were good, to be we're more good. definitive about it, um, what kind of technical support can we expect? The Philippines at that, from the UN? I think intelligence is one. Um, uh, they've had a lot of... Uh, I hope, anyway, they've had a lot of experience in ISIS, uh, with ISIS in Iraq and mm -hmm. Syria. They can give us their best practices there. All right. Um, actual weaponry, that will be United States, China, if they help, uh, Russia. Russia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. The second part of that uh, speech was this. It talked about, it touched the it touched human rights. Uh, it yes. said, ready to combat transnational crime, including drug trafficking and people trafficking, mm -hmm. with policies to protect citizens and respect and, and the respect for human rights. How are we to understand this? Well, because that is one among his first duties, the United Nations was founded to stop crimes against humanity. Every time they have an anniversary, it's Auschwitz. Uh, then Rwanda, uh, Biafra, the, the, which uh, uh, was in Nigeria, and the other atrocities committed by Pakistan in the creation of Bangladesh. So that's really, he has to raise that. Mm -hmm. But I guess the, the, the first priority is counterterrorism because they just created the uh, counterterrorist unit led, led by a Russian, so mm -hmm. he needs to get that accepted by the world. Um, but when he but mentioned he human rights, was yes. that in reference? Would you say that was in reference if any, to the Philippines or the president's war on drugs? Well, I think right now it's uh, overridden by... Uh, I, the Philippines, of course, was very notable. I, I, I answered uh, Agnes Calamard in the UN and the ICC president. 
Um, the one thing I wanted to do, and I think he, it was appreciated, I said, let's define terms first. Mm. A crime against humanity is a crime against persons, especially large numbers of persons on account of their race, religion, uh, political beliefs, none of which they can help. They are born with them. They are convictions. But drug dealing is a career choice. It's and not a, you're saying it's not a crime, it's not against, a crime against humanity. humanity. It's a career choice and it's a, a fatal career choice in some cases. But in some cases it works. In Mexico, uh, the career choice to be a drug dealer has uh, in, uh, created a narco state. Well, congratulations to them. But I made it clear when I spoke in the UN, it has been suggested by some people that uh, we legalize this crime. Legalizing a crime does not make it any less a crime. That we minimize uh, the scale of the drug problem, denying the size of the drug problem is no solution. Mm. I said on top of which, even if it was, we will not live with drugs and okay. the drug trade because it won't let us live. So, it, plain and simple though, sir, um, when he mentioned human rights, mm. would you categorically say, was it in reference to the campaign against illegal drugs or not? It, it's, that's included. There's no question. Okay. It's included. But would you say just glossed over? Not really glossed over. He has other concerns. Yeah. Uh, and, then also, and, and you know, of anyone who had the right to speak there on human rights to ASEAN members, it's the United Nations alone who had the right to speak because the United Nations is a regional organization. Every member of ASEAN is a member of the United Nations. He could have lectured specifically and it would be correct. However, Special guests like Justin Trudeau, uh, <laughs> you know, they have no place in ASEAN. Absolutely. Well, Canada has no place. Australia has no place. New Zealand has no place. Even the United States has no place. It was, ASEAN was created precisely because of the failure of the Southeast Asian Treaty Organization, which joined the Vietnam War and lost. Um, what was it called back then? Uh, CETO. CETO. Yeah. Southeast, yeah and, uh, in fact, if I, must, I must add this because I'm really proud of the Vietnamese. When the Vietnamese military attaché goes to a great grand party, comes into this uniform, <laughs> and he says, how do you do? I'm the country that beat three members of three permanent members of the Security <laughs> Council. France, the United States, and China. <laughs> That's how they introduce themselves. Well, you mentioned about uh, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Yeah. I'm going to ask you what your thoughts on mm. him bringing up human rights, um, EJK, and the rule of law, and of course, the President's answer to that. We'll, we'll be taking a short break. This is The Source on CNN Philippines. Also coming up, the uh, exchanges between the President, as I mentioned, and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Can it affect Philippine-Canada relations, Philippine ambassador to the UN, Teddy Boy Loxin Jr. will still be with us after the break. And later, a rescue operation you wouldn't want to miss. Find out how a community helped six stranded sperm whales in Indonesia. That's for today's In Focus.
Our guest today, Philippine Ambassador to the United Nations, Seti Boy Loxin Jr. We left it at uh, Justin Trudeau, Prime yes. Minister of Canada, saying he talked about EJK rule of law. Um, and, and the president said he was insulted by this. But he, sh he should be, because uh, Canada was a guest. Uh, it, as I said, it's no part of this part of the world. Uh, it's very nice to know, though, that he is half, uh, partly Malaysian, uh, Malayan, rather, uh, Trudeau. But uh, as I said, the UN could have brought it up. And whether you're angry or not, that was its duty. But it saw in the context of things that uh, excessive police operations, you know, call them brutal, like the city of New York, and you know, or, or the Chicago police, fine, that's one. But to put it all under crimes against humanity, as I said, drug dealing is a career choice. So you don't think the Prime Minister should have... Right. No, he shouldn't have. Because he was a special guest. He didn't have to be invited. In fact, I, I don't know why he was. Um, but there it is. But I can, no, I know why. Because I would... You know, let's face it. He is the most accomplished politician in the best sense of the word. He means everything he says and what he does. When he went to Tondo, that's not a show. Really? That's him. Yeah. I knew the father, that's how old I am. Yeah. I mean, I knew of the father. Okay, he was very, very handsome. Handsomer than this boy, but aristocratic. Uh -huh. Very distant. Okay. This boy really... Ha he has the appeal. And he he's has got... Some this yeah yeah there's well, no question well that obviously did not sit well with the president but you were mentioning of course that if anyone can bring it up you're saying it's to the united nations yes. this is what i wanted to ask you how can you describe now mm. the relationship if any uh, uh, of the philippines or the president with the united nations with the new sec gen um taking over the post i think in january that's right it yeah. was so mm. almost one year now of course we understand how it was back then yes. with the old um, the former sec gen that's right ban ki -moon. Yeah, ban ki -moon. he was a bureaucrat um, what kind of relationship are you seeing well uh i think the, the visit of alan cayetano was really good because he was he would always when we would meet with u.s senators who were critical of the of the anti-drug campaign yeah. and then when he would met with duterte he kept bringing up ejk's i said ah do you mind and he said tito if you don't talk about EJK, which is the biggest elephant in the room, right. they will after you leave the room. <laughs> and then they'll say, why complain? You never said anything about it. So, okay, he insisted on talking about it. So and he, he confronted it. it. Yeah, he confronted it. And, and, uh, and the, in fact, Guterres uh, in, in one meeting said, by the way, uh, we, when he met with him on this drug thing, but I, I never legalized drugs in Portugal. I don't know who said that. He said, it's just that if you're a user, you yes. go to the police and turn yourself in if you, if you want rehab. If you don't want rehab, well, you can drop dead in the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Now, pushing and dealing, he said, remain criminal. It's a different, yeah, yeah. It's different. That, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But the president, President Rodrigo Duterte, is now saying that maybe the, the, the country can host what is called a, a World Summit on Human Rights. Do you think? I think That's it's a, a good, good idea. idea. Yes, I think clarification is a good idea as to what exactly are crimes against humanity. I think uh, facing the drug, uh, the drug threat, I think I gave the best report on the scale of the drug threat, and it came from the UN, unfiltered by me. They said we are in the main route of the drug trade. Okay. And they, and it the is, Philippines. Yes, and it is the, the main uh, financial supporter of terrorism. But they if call you it criminal insurgency but, but if you call if you think it's a good idea of course amnesty international is saying we don't have the moral authority to even host a, um, a summit on human rights well amnesty international uh, acts as if it has all the moral authority in the world to open its mouth i remember cory aquino just took over the government three months later a military unit well shot up a village and uh, I, I really admire um, Doña Bea Zobel, who went to the, to the palace and shouted at Cory. said, Do you look at her hand, the baby. Mm -hmm. right? had been, the hand had been shut off. She adopted that kid, by the way. Um, fine. Then Amnesty Center weighed in and condemned Cory. Mm -hmm. Hey, please. She just took over control of the government. Yeah. The army was proceeding as it did before, killing anything on sight, mm -hmm. anything that moves. So, you know, they shouldn't talk about, suddenly they're humble. So, so you think, obviously, that um, it's Let's a good do idea. it, that, yeah. That, that. Because I don't like the, the Jews who were slaughtered, the Armenians, the Rwandans, thank you, France, uh, and, and all the other uh, victims of atrocities should be lumped up with drug dealers and drug pushers. Come okay. on. All right. Um, one last item, because I saw a tweet of you regarding this, Sas Rogando confronting the BBC mm. journalists. Of course, I ask you that because you, you've been a journalist for the longest time, sir. So yes, was yeah. that right? 
Was that yes. correct of uh, Sas Rogando to confront the BBC journalist? I think it is. Uh, Why? It is because it's her opinion and she finds bias on the part of the BBC seeking out a small blogger, but maybe it's a Maybe the small blogger is a Hemingway, writes really well, uh, and you would notice it. But still, it shares a right to bring up a concern. And what about my majority opinion, majority opinion? Mm -hmm. So that, I think it's correct. And, then, and someone tweeted and said, yeah, but who does she represent? Well, one, who does the minor blogger represent? Themselves. Yeah. She is a, a citizen. She's a person. She has a right to confront. And, second, and third, Noli De Castro, when it was, uh, I, I, I really admire him for this, when it was proposed that uh, killing journalists would be qualified murder. And he said, why? What's special about us? It's a job. He said, no they shoot us, uh, they also shoot jeepney drivers. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 I don't like, um, the, you know, what is worse than the culture of impunity is the culture of self-congratulation of some members of media, but not all. <laughs> well, all right, so when do you go back to New York? Um, Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. It's good to have you and Thank good you. to see you. you. We wish you well, of I course. I always enjoyed uh, uh, being on this show. Yeah. And, and yeah. I know, I hope we have you back again. Um, are you going to spend Christmas here? No, no. Okay, you'll be there. spending. You will have a white Christmas. <laughs> ambassador, it's still Ambassador. Teddy Boy Luxin Jr., always a pleasure. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Ms. Webb. Thank you. This is the source on CNN Philippines. Coming up, a breathtaking rescue of six sperm whales stranded in the coast of Indonesia. The program. Leaders from Southeast Asian nations vow to fight terrorism. Terrorism and violent extremism endanger the peace, the stability, and security of our region. Because these threats, no.